Hello everyone, today our topic is the syntax. Now let's move to the first part. A syntax is an exercise or sales tax specially left on certain goods deemed harmful to society and individuals. For example, alcohol and tobacco, candies, and so on. On the one hand, governments can financial reasons to tax particular goods. On the other hand, government sometimes collects syntax for protecting the health of citizens. For example, tobacco was new to England in the 17th century, but even then smoking had plenty of criticals. The most famous was King James, who in 1604 described smoking as a custom lost down to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, and dangerous to the lungs. And in blacking and stinking films, therefore, there is the resembling the stinking smoke of the pit that was bottomless. The king increased the import tax on the luxury speed by 4,000%. This seems a double win. On the one hand, increase tax revenue, on the other hand, promote social health. However, it's not the case in reality. Okay, let's talk about the purpose of syntax. Syntax has two distinct purposes. One is to deter people from the behavior that does them harm. Another is to pay for the cost to the society as a whole of that beha harmful behavior. For the first purpose, syntax is still used as a behavior tax. Economic models assume that people is rational, but in fact, it is flesh and blood human struggle with self-control. And tax policy can help, and syntax make people more healthier. Uh, but since most of the smokers, drinkers, and the obesity do is to themselves rather than to others, people may feel that smoking and drinking are more enjoyable than living longer. So governments need to think carefully about how much they want to interfere. But do externalities caused by drinking alcohol, smoking, and consuming sugar as large as we estimated? First, uh, for tax on smoking, people usually overestimate the negative externalities of smoking on the public, although unhealthy people tend to cost governments more while they are live. And this is at least partially offset by the fact that they tend to die earlier, since lifelong smoking will bring forward a person's death by about 10 years, which means that smokers tend to die just as they would start drawing from the state pensions, which saves taxpayers money. And as the graph shows, the actual uh, social marginal cost line is below the expected line, which means Policy, make, policy papers tend to overstate the economy cost of smoking. And second, let's talk about uh, tax on sugar. Different boys have different economic costs since they harm people in different ways. Say for the especially mm. overweight, most obese people do not die much earlier but they do tend to require more medical attention than their healthier peers, and often spanning the course of several decades. The actual social marginal cost line is above the expected line as the graph shows. So obesity does impose net, net, net cost on taxpayers. Third is about the tax on alcohol. The externalities from alcohol are less clear because only a majority of minority of drinkers are seriously uh, alcoholics, which limits the direct health care cost from drinking. Alcohol is also heavily linked to violence and cash crashes. Excessive drinking, however, does cause significant crime with higher probability. Mm -hmm. And the graph shows the actual social marginal cost line 
is hard to determine because of the uh, a small smaller proportion and larger probabilities. Uh, okay, the the third part is uh, we I, I I would wonder is it true that government can both increase tax revenue and promote social health, and maybe uh, it is not the case in reality. The same tax may not be as effective as what the government wish. Uh, first, same tax have very different effect on different segments of people. For the rich and the poor, the effect is different. IFS study finds that though Britain's new law will lower sales of fizzy drinks, it will have little effect on the behavior of those who just consume the most sugar in Mexico. The data show that the tax did lead uh, poor people poor households buy le uh, fewer sugar sweetened drinks, but it had little impact, impact on how much the rich consume. And also for, the, uh, for those addicted and those not, the effect is also different. People who only occasionally drink or smoke do their body little harm, yet are taxed no differently from heavy smokers or drinkers. Um, a study published last year by the uh, IFS, a think, a think tank, found that uh, Britons who bought only a few drinks a week were more uh, sensitive to price fluctuations than heavy drinkers. Um, for teenagers and adults, the effect is different as well. Uh, consumer might simply gather sugar from diet habits which formed when people are young and are very hard to be changed. Um, and fancy drinks are disproportionately drunk by teenagers who are more sensitive to price changes. And secondly, syntax may just have an effect on the local sales, but not necessarily have much effect on local consumption since people can buy from nearby city. After Berkeley in in, in do, introduced is, is tax. Um, sales of sugary drinks uh, rose by 6.9% um, uh, in nearby cities. Uh, Denmark, which instituted a tax on fat laden uh, foods in 2011, ran into similar problems. The government got rid of tax a year later when it discovered uh, that many shoppers were buying butter in nearby Germany or Sweden. So, syntax may not be as effective as garment wish. Thank you, this is all our presentation.